Welcome to part 2 on how to make Geometry Dash in Scratch. Today I am going to be showing you how to make scrolling environments, that way we can have an actual level for a game. I am also going to be showing you how to make a death system, that way if the player dies, it restarts the level. I hope you guys will enjoy this video, and let's begin! So here is the project, as we left it off last time, and the first thing I am going to do is go to variables, make a new variable, and call it player x. This is going to keep track how far the player has gotten into the level. Then, when it starts, we are going to set player x to 0, and in the forever loop, we are going to change player x by something like minus 12. I found this to be the best value after a bunch of playtesting. So pretty much what it's going to do now, that player x is going to begin at 0, and the player is going to move forward constantly. Unless you want your player going backwards, Make sure this is a negative number. Now we are ready to start making the floor scrolling. So we're going to go over to the floor, then when green flag clicked, repeat, create a clone of itself. Each clone is going to be a separate section of the level. Now we need a way of knowing which section goes where, so we're going to create a new variable called x. Make sure to select for the sprite only, that way each clone has its own copy of this variable. Then at the beginning, we are going to set x to something like minus 480. And then in the repeat, we are going to change x by 480. Now the reason because this is 480 is because 480 is the amount of pixels from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. So now, when it starts as a clone, we are going to forever go to we're going to drag in a plus, and we're going to forever go to player x plus x. You can just leave y to zero. If you press play now, you'll see that the floor isn't scrolling. That's because the original floor sprite is in front of the clones. So to fix this, all we have to do is go to looks, and hide the sprite when the green flag is clicked, and it's going to show once it starts as a clone. Now if we test this, you just see that we have a nice scrolling floor. Awesome! We can also go ahead to variables and hide player x and x. Now to make it an actual level, not just a floor, we're going to go over to costumes. Then we can duplicate this costume. And on the second costume, we can add anything we want. If you want to use my bad artwork for creating your own levels, link is in the description to a project which will have all of the costumes you'll need to make your own levels. Anyway, after creating your tiles, you can then go ahead, select it, Ctrl C to copy, and Ctrl V to paste. Then you can simply place them around in this section, and we can create our own levels. Feel free to make as many as you want. So I quickly put together a short level. Keep in mind that you can always make some more later on. So now if we click play, you will see that it doesn't appear. And the reason for this is that every clone has to go to the next costume. So we're simply going to go switch costume to the first costume, and then in the repeat block, we're simply going to drag in next costume. So now if we try this, ta-da, your level should appear. Now you can see, obviously, we can crash into things and nothing will happen. So now we are going to make it so that the player can lose and then it will respawn. To start off, we're going to go over to floor, right click, and then click duplicate. Then we can rename this sprite to something like enemies. Then we are going to go over and set ghost effect to 100. This is going to make it so that the sprite is invisible, but it can still detect collisions. Now we are going to leave the rest as it is for now, but we're going to go over into costumes and change up things quite a bit. We are going to pretty much make it so that whenever the player is touching the sprite, it is going to lose. However, we are going to delete all of its blocks because we don't want the player to die when it touches the blocks. Although before deleting them, what we are going to do is zoom in closely, then we are going to go to the line tool, and then we are going to hold the shift to snap it at an angle, and simply click and drag down. So we are going to draw these lines on the left side of the blocks, so that way, if the player collides with the left side of them, the player is going to lose. 
Make sure to keep them about three quarters the height of the block. That way, the player doesn't die if it jumps on top. Don't have to draw the lines for all of the blocks. For example, the player would probably sometimes collide with this side of the block. However, the player is most likely never going to collide with this side, since the spike is going to kill it anyway. So once you're done with drawing all of the lines, you can go ahead and delete all of the blocks. There. You can also delete the floor. Make sure to leave all of the spikes, and you're done! Now you just have to repeat this with every section of your level. So once you're done doing it for all of your levels, now we're going to start scripting it so that if the player touches this sprite, it is going to die. First though, we're going to make it so that the enemies are slightly more to the left than the actual level. So to do that, all we have to do is at the beginning, this set x2, we're going to change it from minus 480 to minus 485. We're also going to set this y value to something like 2. That way it is slightly higher. If it isn't slightly higher, it would prevent the player from actually touching the spikes. Then we're going to go over to player, and then at the bottom of this, we're going to go if touching enemies, then we are going to broadcast lose. There. And then when I receive lose, it is going to hide. You also need to make sure that it shows when I receive start. Later on in part 3 when we add particles, we're going to change this up. But for now, all we're going to do is we're going to wait for one second, then it will going to broadcast start. So now if we test this, you should see that it mostly works. One big problem that we have is that when we lose, the scene keeps on going. We want it to stop when we lose. So let's go ahead and fix that quickly. First of all, we're going to create a new variable and call it stop. Then we can go and hide the stop variable. Then in this forever loop, we're going to go if, then we're going to drag in an equal reporter block. So if stop equals zero, we're then just going to do this. Then we are going to do the same thing for the floor. So we're again, if, stop equals zero we then it's going to do this and if stop equals one or anything else other than zero it's not going to keep on moving so now if we go back to player when we receive lose we are going to set stop to one then it's going to wait the one second and then it's going to set stop back to zero so now if we test this you'd see that when we die it stops, and then we can respawn. Nice! Now one last thing is the background keeps on moving, and there's this bug where only half of the background works. So to fix that, we're going to go to background, and instead of timer times minus 100, we're going to do player x divided into something like 4. Then we can duplicate this and put it over here. Now to fix the bug where only half of the background appears, all we have to do is drag this forever loop and put it under the create clone of myself, instead of under when I receive start. So now if we click play, it should completely work. Ta-da! Thank you so so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. In part 3, we're going to be adding sound effects as well as music and particle effects. We're also going to be making a simple system, that way the player can finish the level. If you guys really enjoy the series, I might make a part 4 and a part 5, so subscribe to stay tuned. I also now have a Discord server, so if you want to join that, link is in the description. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.